Uh, so we are called the meeting to order. Good seeing you all in person for the second time this year. I think I hope we can keep this going. Um, rates are rising like we're in the low 20s, right? I don't know what. Yeah, they've gone from single digits up to Fairfield County being like uh, 19 or 20 and Westchester 24. This is cases per 100,000. So I don't know how you all feel about should this be, you know, doubling in cases if we want to go back to Zoom. Um, why don't I just ping, you know, ping you in a poll? It's got to be a saying, ping you in a poll. Um, well, why don't we just wait until next month? And then yeah, yeah, at the next meeting and see how you all feel about it, you know, a week or two before all, a week before all. So, so it'd be a drag to go back to Zoom, but um, <laughs> let's see how we all feel. Um, so first, I'll give the chairman's report. Uh, first big news is we have a new commissioner official, uh, Commissioner Julie Jones. That was uh, pretty quick work for the normal process. Okay. Yeah, I know so. it, it felt long, right? But we've had longer. Um, it just sometimes the wheels go slowly, but great to have you on board. Thank you. Excited to be here. And I'll launch into a couple of, of um, things I wanted to bring up. I, I, I'm not going to be that long on any of mine, but uh, I want to give you an update on the 90 Pear Tree Point dock application. Did you all see the letter? I, um, I guess you've got a copy of it. Good now. Um, I'll, I'll be frank, I, I was unimpressed by the letter. Ba basically, they say um, they've got an existing stone wharf. Uh, they want to use that, um, parentheses for my thinking, keep costs down. And that if they go to the north, which we advise to hit the, sh you know, hit the deeper mark quicker um, with less length of dock, um, they say they're at a higher elevation and that's going to need more infrastructure, which to me implies more cost on their side. I didn't think it was a letter which really defended too well their choice of building 200 feet out into our river. Um, so uh, that, that's my personal opinion. I don't know how you all feel. Um, I have sent this to um, uh, Jeremy Ginsburg and our new first selectman, and um, who in spirit have been, I think, on board with the dock being too long and we're okay on our objection letter going out. Um, and suggested we take a next step, although that next step, I didn't know what it should be, but I'd like to talk about it with them, I said. Um, so far from uh, Mr. Ginsburg's side, I've gotten a, he doesn't know what else we can do. We've sent an objection letter. The state determines this. That was what he said, and he's, he's right. Um, we don't have any authority in this realm. So um, I'll put it to the commission, does anyone have ideas about how shrill we might get or what next steps we might take? Um, because I went to that meeting at the Shelfers Commission meeting uh, two weeks ago, this was actually brought up by someone in, uh, in Greenwich and someone else in Norwalk, in that the harbor commissions, the harbor masters, and even the towns, the municipalities, it's been ruled by, by the uh, Court of Appeals recently that we have no say in dock applications whatsoever. It all goes to deep. And basically, you know, we can advise, but there's, we have no power of veto or anything, and that the court is likely going to uphold it. If, if we were a Harbor Management Commission, an official sanctions Connecticut one, we could have, well, and, and if we could have carved out some duties of approval mm -hmm. for these dock applications, then we might have a say, but not being an official Harbor Commission and not having a document which carves out a specific role for us, we, it's true, we do not have any... But even limits. municipalities, you yeah. know, from, from whether it's P&Z, Parks and Rec, or any kind of, you know, uh, Harbor Commission equivalent, mm. no, well, they have no say at this point. No, the, I think the only, and I'm not recommending it, but the only thing you could do is launch like a publicity campaign, a news story, this is a like, scandalous thing, too big, it's gonna, I mean, you could see that playing out in the newspaper and being untracked, but. Right, I, I agree with you. I, I don't think it's our place to do that. We're an advisory commission. We need to stand behind the selectmen. We may give them advice that may differ from what they think, uh, but th at the end of the day, that's our remit. So, I mean, as an advisory commission, we've already given our advice to the first selectman. And I mean, it would seem to me the next action would be up to them if, if they wanted to do something. If, if they wanted to, right, I think 
get more vocal about it. Um, and I, again, um, Jeremy Ginsburg has indicated no to me, or that he doesn't see that as my Yeah, and I, and I can understand that. I don't think that's his role, perhaps. Um, he's, he's a landward, <clears throat> this is a, into a realm, he's waterward, but he doesn't have authority, he knows that. Um, so it becomes m maybe a political slash publicity issue, and would our uh, selectmen like to, you know, burn some political capital on that? I don't know. Um, so the, the one step I thought can I, I can... Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, so <clears throat> it, we may have no rights with respect to docks, but are there any rights with respect to the shellfish beds? That we hold? That well, would be a reason for which Deep would either have some sort of alteration to the dock. Uh, I'm not sure they would outright veto them, because my understanding, this dock would be where we went with the state, and there were some oyster beds, right? So a lot of oyster beds. Potentially, yeah. they could say, no, you have to redirect it forward centrally, but then it, it, it <coughs> right in the center of the waterway. This, this, this letter says that the CT Bureau of Aquaculture reviewed the plans and confirmed that there's no uh, significant impact on the shellfish area and says that the shellfish um, beds there are, rec are recreational and they're closed. Is, is that well, what we... Yeah, so that it's, not, it's not clear what they mean by shellfish area. If they're talking about a permitted shellfishing bed, there's, this, this is not a permitted area. Um, the definition of it is restricted which means it doesn't have sufficient infiltration of septic or other stuff that no one can take shellfish from there other than sea oysters that would be less than two inches could be kind of like manually removed by walking around in the muck and then they could be transplanted somewhere else to be grown out, but no one has ever allowed anyone to do that. But is it determinative that just because you can't use it for recreational purposes, that it can be destroyed? I mean, is anyone... I don't know about that. Because it still has good function of cleaning water, yeah. being attractive, attracting other animals. Yeah. Exactly. My understanding was it was protected, and that's why they couldn't be... Well, they couldn't be protected <coughs> for uh, quality control and, and health reasons, but I thought that those beds were protected. Well, I, I think the Department of Agriculture has at least referred to them and the reefs that exist in that area is somewhat unique within Connecticut and something that we would want to preserve. We, we did well, mention the beds in our objection letter, and the um, analyst who's on this DOC application said she would consult with CT Aquaculture. Um, they're, they're saying here that, that it's reviewed and been rejected, but is that... Did you see any evidence about this beyond this letter? Or? They, they never even mentioned it at the shellfish gathering two weeks ago. Very much. Maybe that's a point that. If anything, they're looking to reseed oysters in our area. So that would just. I would think so. Wouldn't judge. Yeah, I, I don't know what. I don't know what leverage or power that might have. Um, again, I, I, I feel that. The, I don't feel I should be independently reaching out to CT Deep on this. Um, that they have our, our first selection, our, um, and, and Jeremy allowed me to do so with this letter. So I have talked to her twice, thrice on the phone, actually, all with regard to sending this letter. So I actually maximized my exposure to her. I didn't really need to probably talk to her just to send the letter, but I wanted to make sure she was the right person and some of the points we were addressing. Um, I don't really feel there's a role for me to keep reaching out to her. On these points, so I, I mean, what I can do is is try to, um, w with um, our first selectman, uh, reiterate the points of our objection letter, bring up the aquaculture, um, see if she would use that uh, in any way with a further call of CTD. I honestly don't know how to push it beyond that. I feel we stand behind them. Uh, they were very supportive, the first selectman and and, um, and Jeremy Ginsburg in, in the meeting we had. So. Um, you know, I don't, uh, don't know if that extends to another level. Okay. I mean, to me, it sounds like we're fulfilling our charter <laughs> yeah. by doing just what you're saying. Yeah. And, you know, it's, that's our advice. <laughs> I think it's frustrating, though, because I think we, the opinion roundly in the room, I don't think with exception, uh, was if that talk goes in at 200 feet, we all feel something. Was, yeah. 
there's been a trespassing in the river, um, and that that water, which is public trust, has been violated. I think we all feel that, and I, I'm pretty upset about it too. And for Doc going, there. it's also a bad precedent. It does, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I'll reiterate these points. <clears throat> does it impede the uh, the waterway at all? The channel? It narrows it. <clears throat> it narrows it. The Thalweg, I think they call that. Um, I think it renders it 40 feet, I think the letter says. And so that is 40 feet of passage. You know, take two motorboats and a couple <laughs> kayakers, and that's used up, and everyone's too close. So I, I think that's objectionable. So one, one of the things that they brought up with you know, other, other harbor commissions <coughs> and whatnot is that normally when these docks are approved, the, the floating dock where people can moor their boats and stuff like that, it, it's what, 5 by 10? Something like that? 100 square feet. 100 square feet. So 10 by 10. And so that typically, you know, we're allowed two boats in, in that general area. Mm -hmm. But if I, if I recall, this is actually for four different properties. Right. So what would keep them from trying to extend that and having two <coughs> more boats that would? But, uh, Monica um, was uh, really, uh, I thought, uh, smart in uh, saying to me right away, early on in the discussion of this, what would you say if they came back and said, let's have two 40-foot docks? Uh, to the 40-foot docks are the general application. They don't really have to go through any process or anything. It's just a plain vanilla, yeah, you got it. Um, and she suggested, what if there's just two for the waterfront properties? You guys should think about that. Um, I actually think... That would be better. I think it would yeah. be better. Yeah, that would yeah. definitely be better. And our letter left open the possibility that we would <laughs> consider different <clears throat> alternatives. So, um, you know, I, I think, again, I need to apply pressure and see if they come back with something more imaginative in their solution than this letter. Um, but it's all through Monica. So, I mean, I, I, my end thought on this is I, I will have a meeting with the first selectman, uh, and hopefully Jeremy's there also, and I'll raise all the points again. And I'm, I'm assuming everyone has the same feeling about this going forward, and they, uh, I'll reiterate the commission's concern that this ever gets built. And that's it. I don't know what else to do about that. I agree. All right, on the happier things. Although um, I would think, mm -hmm. though, that it may be too late now, because tell me I've already done happened, but the, 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 when you said, oh, this is a dock for four houses, it's, that's not really true. It's a false trade, as you point out. It's a dock, it's a big dock for two houses. The general rule is if you have waterfront property, you can make an application to have a dock. What they did was take two inland properties that are not waterfront properties and give them a little tiny interest in the actual shore, which is not contiguous to the rest of their property. Um, and so that, to me, is sort of a sophistry that actually the town has regulatory over th authority over. Now, it may be that the horse is out of the barn, but that, that is a really bad precedent because you can take that mechanism, you could buy like a 10 foot by 10 foot piece of waterfront property and sub it out to 100 people by the same mechanism. Now you've got 100 people with a dock application. That shouldn't be allowed to occur. Maybe, if nothing else, one of the things we should do is, as a town, learn that that sort of mechanism should not be allowed to go forward in the planning and zoning process. That's yeah, a point. that's a great point. That's a great point. But is that even on the table now? I, I thought this thing started off <clears throat> a vision of four docks, 40 foot long or whatever it was. That's correct. And then they the way they responded to our first concern was, you know, we thought it would be better to make a very long, a single long dock. And that was um, P and Z trading water rights away, and that P and Z's uh, landward, so actually, I don't think they had business doing that. Mm -hmm. So the, the initial trade here was into our territory, or into CTD's territory, if you know, water routes. But it starts with the premise that you have four houses that could have four docks. That we should never allow that to, to continue that way. It's a great point, and I, I will raise that. Um, we've talked. Um, I think you know. Let's keep observing what comes down the pike, and I, you know, I don't know. Just keep on fighting as best we can. Um, 
It's just kayaks. There's no floating dock or anything, right? Yeah, there's a floating dock, yeah. There is 10 a by 10 dock. foot floating dock, yeah. Yep. You know what? That whole dock is just going to look like dirty laundry hanging out on the line. Yep. There's going to be everything all over, life jackets, everything. It's just going to look like crap. Yep. And Even we, worse, there won't be anything on it because no one will ever use it <laughs> because it's <laughs> too, the water's too shallow there. Right. <clears throat> and so we're going to have taken the hit visually <clears throat> ended up, for no good reason. And it ups the ante for everyone who's on the water to do I something similar. have a cocktail on a Friday night, probably. Yeah. All right, let, let, let's move on if, if we could. Um, so I've got a final plan in front of us all for the year. It's got the projects winnowed down. If you go to maybe page uh, six, the activities for 2022 are, are um, reduced and, and I think focused enough. Um, we've got the Mooring Field Improvement Project, which has got some breadth here, so I think the team, though, has sort of an open-ended task. I think we need to work with the Harbor Master and the Board of Selectmen um, and the local mooring service providers and really come up with some deliverables for the year. Um, but, but, Tom, let me ask you, should we work? This is a little bit on hold right now, pending John's arrival. Should we just be moving it forward and working with you in the interim, or...? I'm hoping today's my last meeting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I don't like you guys, <laughs> but 12 years is enough. <laughs> um, but so know. we should, we'll continue having it a little bit beyond hold. Yeah. yeah. It, it is a concern. Um, these are really pressing issues in our harbor right now, um, and and it's maybe compounded with Ziegler perhaps coming our way. David Collins nicely brought that up as something. We maybe should dis discuss. Um, so I, I hope we don't wait to have uh, Kina in place too long. It'd be nice to get up and running. We need to not use his name. Okay. In the event that something happens. Sure. Okay. In the process, please. The next person would be nice to have in our midst already and, uh, and get talking on that. So um, we've got the concern anyway that there's going to be too much time going on, which is not anyone's fault except people up in Hartford, I guess. Um, anyway, the, the next page, uh, page 8, Coastal Water Project, which we had a nice meeting on. Um, uh, Julie and Bill um, joined me. Uh, we also were joined by um, uh, Flip, I, we, we haven't had a chance to talk, actually. Beth Harmon joined us as sort of an interested party. Um, and we should talk about some potential partnering opportunities there, but that's all uh, upside. Um, the, the basic... Um, thrust of this is to, to go on with our water sampling. We've got six years of data now, and the programs, um, are, this year will be the sixth year of data we acquire. So we have sort of a base. Um, we've got good partners on this. We've, we've got an up and going program to create a, a periodic water report that's more comprehensive and more useful than the data as assembled and thrown to the selectmen and town director each year. Um, at the end of the year. So um, the question upon the team is what can we do that summarizes what we gather every two weeks and creates a good discussion in town about, hey, where are the water quality standards going here? Um, and we thought to both get that regularized and in some more impactful, accessible form, as well as broaden it. So Sound Waters does Holly Pond, Harbor Watch does Five Mile River. Those reports are readily available to us. Uh, and there's um, river sampling going on by the Land Trust. I know, um, it was mentioned, I know Harbor Watch also is doing river sampling in the river and further upstream. We have a question mark in your face, so we'll yeah, come I'm back to that later. Land Trust doing in Harbor, um, okay. uh, the, the idea is gathering more participants in this than just ourselves. And also there's the state bacteria reports and local observations, like when you're giving me a call and tell me there's a orange red tie red tie out there you've got you've got video footage that you know we, we should post that um, that that's a significant data point so I think this is a neat project um, I think that we'll have some neat results on that I think it's a little hard to do also though so um, the uh, that we met with a um, social media person uh, help me out Marley I can't remember her last name. Yeah, it came too quickly, sorry. Um, but there's a social media person who's helping out, and she's going to help us 
um, get some of this online, I have to talk to the first selectman about how much of it they would like online. So we have to talk about the form. Um, and then, you know, this is a, what this is trying to do is take the water quality program to the next step to make its findings create more conversation on water quality. But it'd be great to build off it in this last bullet point that talks about some other projects we could perhaps build on that. And lastly, um, it'd be great to get some more events in the year. And there was a, a fantastic shellfish awareness program proposed. Um, it'd be great to get that um, up and running. And it really is what's been done sort of casually at the boat club, and it's a little beefed up with more participants and more advertising for it. Um, that would just be wonderful. So we'll leave that as a good upside to, to, to happen. I think that would be wonderful if we can get people together to do that. And uh, debris cleanups. We have got um, Earth Day coming up uh, April 23rd, and I have volunteered us as a group to join the Dairy Men's Association to do a cleanup of the Good Wives River, um, just like we did on our last cleanup, starting at Pear Tree Point Beach, but not the beach, just starting on the river and working up the east side and then popping over to Goodwives Meadows to see if we can't get in that little catch area and get some real poundage out of the, uh, out of the marsh. There's a voice there. Yeah. So, so that's going to take place the 23rd, which is the day after Earth Day. So anything that weekend is an Earth Day event. Um, 1 to 3 p.m. And it'd be great to have as many of you want to join. That's on Saturday? Saturday, yeah. So 1 to 3 p.m. Pear Tree Point Beach. You know, just show up in something that can wait in uh, muck and we'll have... Uh, um, you know, um, plastic bags and uh, a scale, and we'll take a picture at the end. There we go. So. Did that, um, have you waded in that lower good wise river muck? It's yeah, it's quite hazardous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah watch your watch your boots. You can lose them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you don't want to lose your boots because if you have to put your foot down without with just socks on or something yeah. like that, the yeah. moisture yeah. shifts. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. sure, super sure. Yeah. You can throw your rope once, and then you're just on your own. Um, and I, I included, a, a, I think, in the in the um, a little link to the um, a, a marine debris webinar uh, in the agenda. That if you all see, you can just cut and paste. It's it's midday, unfortunately, <coughs> April fourteenth, which I think is Thursday, twelve to one thirty. But TNC and Save the Sound have gotten together and doing a lot on debris in the um, in in the sound. Have you seen their um, debris sampling card where they a last take a, ta a tally of the yeah. different categories of debris? Yeah, I saw last year. We ought to consider doing that and, you know, because last year we weighed yeah. it, right? Yeah, we didn't really, yeah. But if you dump it all out and then sort it, uh, it it's, it's really interesting to see the categories in it. You might get like an article in the newspaper or something talking about not only that you did the cleanup, but what did it you gives find? It gives it more depth, yeah. yeah. I think that's a great idea. I mean, I'll, I'll get the cards. I guess we've got to have people wanting to hang around for another half hour and get get uh, source. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great idea. Um, so why don't, we, why don't we try to do that? So. Um, why, why don't you email me, if, you know, a day or two before the event, if you're intending on coming, and then we'll know who we've got and what. Can you of, can you send out a calendar item to yeah. everybody? Yeah, happy to do that. Because that, that will give us something to respond to. This stuff is low hanging fruit, so um, you know, just it's showing up for a couple hours, and and uh, with the social media presence, you know, we can splash ourselves out there and and make this a little more impactful than just us feeling good. So. You're giving me a look. What? No, I <laughs> I like the trash cleanup. I get some kind of perverse sense of satisfaction from picking all that stuff up. It, it feels great. Yeah, it does. And um, you know, it, it just is out there all the time. It's amazing how much junk is out there. So it's it's really super helpful. It's the same day as the Club cleanup day. Uh, I think it's going to do their property. Is that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, so that's me. Um, I, you know, I, I guess I, I didn't come back to the action plan. I mean, I, I think, um, I thought we'd had all had enough time to see this, and I guess it would be probably good to do an official vote to adopt it at this point. I think that's probably a, a, a good um, mechanism to put this in play. 
So are people comfortable with the discussion that's taken place on it to date? You know, we've been on it for like several times, and I think we've had enough round table discussions. Um, so unless I'm hearing objection, can I have, a, I guess, a second to take a vote to approve this as our official 2022 plan? Second. And, uh, good. And so everybody who's in favor, and anyone who's not, we're all good. Thank you. I, you know, we have a quorum. We're just missing. Bill, all right. I, yes. Yeah, yes, I approve. Great. Thank you. So I think we're just missing one person. So that's all good. So um, this will be what we adopt, and, and we'll make some progress on the um, on the projects. And I'll, I'll let the board of selectmen know this is what we're going after this year. I think this will be a good good um, path forward. It's great. Thank you all. So um, with. Without further ado, Tom, if you're available to give us a Harbor Masters report, I think, you know, we're all a little anxious as the season approaches, and at this point, while you're still the official acting Harbor Master, official Harbor Master, I'm not acting. Excuse me, I misspoke. It, it, it feels like you're standing in while we wait for the another guy to... Well, this was promised to me in January. So. I, I know, you've been a good, good egg, and so can you maybe tell us... Give us all, we've talked a little before the meeting, but give all the commissioners a little view when you think this might happen. Do you have any visibility it as, into it? It is as close as it's ever been. <laughs> um, one of the issues is uh, that what happened is that their end is closed on Friday. So if any kind of paperwork comes in, it won't come in until next week. Um, saying that the, the person has been accepted as the Harbor Master. Um, he is going through the process of, you know, getting things that he needs to get done as the Harbor Master. Uh, so I expect to have, you know, within the next, no later than the end of next week, oh, this is there good. will be an announcement from the first selectman's office that a person has been selected. Well, that's heartening. Good. So, so it's right around the corner. Yes. And I am, will be meeting with him multiple times just to go through the process and whatever. Um, he is a voter, obviously. Uh, been around for a long time. And, uh, you know, almost everybody in the room probably knows what I'm talking about. I don't want to change it because it's, it's been since early January. And I submitted my, actually, I submitted my resignation in the middle of December. Uh, so, anyway. Well, so, so, do you feel there's any gaps that might occur? Um, are, are you, yeah, have um, registrations for moorings started? Oh, they started. Uh, just as soon as the boat club and the yacht club started doing the paperwork, um, uh, I would I would send out notices, um, you know, first early January, and uh, say everything has to be done by February fifteenth. Um, payment received, documentation received, whatever else is needed, and um, as a, as always, every year I'm probably seventy percent or seventy five percent done. That's okay. good. Oh, great. So that haven't you know paid or. Oh, I forgot, or whatever. So that's all been happening. So you have, oh, yeah, we, we haven't known that. We, we wondered if that was all on hold till yeah, the new guy I comes I would not leave that on hold. All right, wonderful. Yeah, so there's, there's no loss in activity um, for people looking for more. It's being on the wait list. Uh, the wait list that we have is just obscene. Um, and uh, it just keeps growing. I'm waiting for the update a little bit. But... Um, uh, it's, it is moving as best as we can. How about things like uh, placement of the mid-channel markers, placement of the rock hazard buoys? Those are all taken care of by the uh, Narodin Yacht crew. Yep. And we'll put those back in the water uh, at this specific time, which is usually May 1st. Yep. Um, I mean, and if you, should that all be... We have no fears that that will be delayed. No. We've got to you there marshalling it or in the no. center room. Or, no. No. They're, they're actually, if I can say it this way, they're kind of ugly looking when they're sitting on the shore, so they want to get them out of the, not, yeah. out of the place and where they belong. Right. Um, and again, as, as people moves up, a lot of um, <coughs> members are involved in uh, tournaments or whatever, certainly fishing capabilities. So that, that's not something that um, will get forgotten. Yeah. Did you turn over a lot of mornings? I'm sorry. Did you turn over a lot of mornings this year? Just curious. Uh, three, four. Three. 
Uh, right now, it's, it's early for me uh, in terms of um, you know putting in boat, actual boats in the water. Um, my wait list now, uh, my wait list, the Harvard wait list, I want to say is uh, 156, 157 people on the list, most of which want um, Darian Harbor, obviously, a few in the row, but there's no wait list in the row. If you want mooring in the row, you can go, it's no problem. Um, it's the question of how do you get to your boat. Right. Uh, I talked to somebody just the other day who wanted a mooring in the row bay, and I said, what are you going to do? I said, well, you know, he's going to put a mooring in, um, park at Lee Beach, take his, go out to the boat on a thing, on the far side of the Lee Beach, you have a a, a rock a ramp that's not really more than that. He's going to get on his boat, he's going to turn, you know, go out and turn around and come back into um, either the Rotten Yacht Club or the Darien mm -hmm. Boat Club to get his family on the boat. And that's uh, going to work. Mm -hmm. If that's what you want to do, great. I, mean, I, mean, that, I just think that's kind of crazy. But I don't, we don't have any other choice. So at 150 on the wait list divided by turnover of three or four a year, that would equate to like 54 <laughs> years. Well, it, was, it is. It, it's not that. It's not that crazy. There are a lot of people on the wait list who, when I call them, oh, I, 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 you know, and now I can't find a boat. And I won't be able to find a boat. Right. So mm -hmm. you know, that's you, big problems here. And it, it, it's also fair to say, is it not, that if someone wanted one of the outside boards, yes, that they could get that. It's yeah. so faster. Depending on the size of the boat, yeah. yes. Um, my 20 foot hydro sport, I'd never let go out there. Um, but for the larger boats, um, sure. You know, 25, 26, whatever. And, and there and I are. Have, I have done that. And there are. I mean, as, as we as a group have talked about, I, I think there are, at least I have in my mind, probably two dozen spots where we could put new mornings in, but we need to get the, I think, the new Harbor Master to come out and... Yes. The thing you need to happen, the thing you need to do is to make sure that when you look at the harbor, and you're looking at the eastern side of the harbor that seems to be quite empty with mornings, we did a test about six years ago, seven years ago, with a hot yacht, yacht club member who was adamant that he wanted to take a mooring over there. Within three weeks, he lost his prop, the board engine prop, um, because of the rocks that you can't see, even at dead low tide. They're just below the surface. And when he, when he did his circle, he lost his prop. Yeah, they're, well, they're, we talk, we've talked about this before, but that's why we need to get the new Harbor Master and kind of go out and show them the places, because I, I, I personally think there are places that you could put more I would, I'm, I'm not disagreeing. I just, yeah. There's not 50. No, no, that's definitely true. There's maybe 10, maybe 20, I don't know, depending on the thing. The one thing I can tell you or give you advice, uh, well, you guys, it's not you, it's the Harbor Master, is that moving people around a lot was tried and floated at the Monroe Yacht Club with very dramatic disappointment. You mean, you mean um, changing their morning locations? Yes. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. Wasn't that just recent? You had What? Just recently? No. But in the past. No, I think it's like basic human nature, right? You get yeah. your mooring, and that's your mooring. Yeah. That, that you don't want to like move over. So yeah, it's God given, people, right? Yeah. There are people who have had the same mooring for you know 30 years, and it's yes. right next yeah. to the dock at the Yacht Club, or you know, near the freight boat. So, so Tom, so you've gone through this transition, jumping into the harbor master role from zero experience being a harbor master to full experience. And now you're looking at John, you're looking at a person coming in. He has the expertise to do the job. What, what, what would you think would be most helpful in his transition that we might provide or the town provide? Uh, again, he's a state employee. He's not a town employee. He's appointed by the state. Yep. Um, knowing who the person is, um, I think he will come into this position quite easily. The, the problem he's going to have is the paperwork side of it, um, because it's a different system than he's used to. Actually, he's, they used to use this system, if, again, if it's the same person, and they moved to a different system um, at the Nero, at the Darien Boat Club. Um, In the online registration? Yes. More, yeah. um, Mooring's online, it, or, yeah. It's, it's not, this is not a complicated process at the beginning. 
critical time to wait list. Uh, the, um, uh, it is, you know, it's, the one thing I would probably say to the new Harbor Master is raise the rate for the more in permit. Currently it's $15 now. You could go up to 25 and people wouldn't really care because it's just a permit. It's not, the, 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 the harbor, the moorings in the harbor are actually owned by the boat owner. And it's their responsibility to maintain them to, to the standards that the town has set and will continue to set, which is great. Um, and whether, you know, whatever changes you guys want to make is, is, is to the betterment of, of the boaters, boat owners in, in the harbor. Um, it is, uh, it, it just takes some time to get understanding of where everything is from the new harbor master. But I, if, if, it, if it is this person, it's not going to be um, a long training. And I'm not going anywhere because I'm also crazy. Um, I am, if you don't know, I'm the commander of the boat club. Yep, you know that. For two years. So uh, I'm still around and, um, uh, you know, ready, willing, and able to help. Um, the one thing I just want to bring up to um, uh, this documentation, uh, on the right-hand side you see mooring at the allocation wait list. Um, well, the one option is you have the um, confirmed Connecticut residency. Now, that is not a valid uh, option. We do not need to have a, a resident of the town Ariana or whomever have a mooring as long as they meet the requirements of being on the wait list and how are they going to get to their boat. And that's the problem. It, it's not just Connecticut residency. It is how do you get to your boat if you don't have beach access or whatever. So it's just, I just would say you should strike that from this. But this is, it, is it true or not true that you have to be a Connecticut resident to have a mooring in the state of Connecticut? That is not true. That's not true. Nope. I have actually several, probably eight or nine people that have moorings in Ziggler's Cove and Scott Cove um, that are not residents of Long Island. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's new to me. Yeah. Oh, we go over there. <coughs> There's a couple of coves my wife and I like to go to um, on our way to um, North Cove. I'm right. just surprised that people would come with the frequency that they weren't getting mooring, but it's probably not. Right, so with, but correct me if I'm wrong, don't they have to occupy the mooring or how does that not, work? No, they don't have to occupy they have to, they don't have to occupy the mooring if it's a, if for them it's not their home. Okay. But if I Because if that was the case then everybody in Zebra Scott Cove and right. wouldn't uh, be able to have a mooring. Right. So just because I live in Darien, then I have to occupy the mooring? Or no. it's depending on what mooring if, if it's a mooring in a in a harbor. Okay. You have to occupy it. If in Darien Harbor. Darien Harbor in the Roten Bay. Okay. But if it's in Ziegler's, Scott Cove. <laughs> oh, so Island, the coves are different than harbors. Yes, because okay, there's sorry. no land there's no land access ah, okay, in those areas. So you can't do anything about it. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So this intersects with <laughs> sort of a big other business thing we we're gonna bring up and maybe just bring it up while we got you here. Um, if the town succeeds in buying the Ziegler property, do you have any understanding of what Actually, that is? Actually, it's property. Yes. Uh, right. On the Ziegler, oh, the no. Ziegler estate. Yeah. Yes. Well, the Stankross is owned a piece of property. Okay. That right. is the subject of town discussion. Okay. Right. They refer to the Ziegler. <laughs> Formerly known as. Um, what's the name again? Stankross. Stankross? Kraus. Kraus. Stankross. Okay. Um, well, it took me a while to roll off my tongue as easily as Ziegler's has over the years gotten into me. Um, so the Steincross's property, uh, th might that have water um, shoreside access to the moorings and might that change the characterization of Ziegler's? Do you, have you had discussions with anybody on that? No, because this is all within the last two weeks to me. Uh, they already have, technically have two moorings and a dock. If you go further into the east side of uh, Ziegler's Cove, where the fire department keeps their boats, um, and they have a, they have an actual garage over there, which they I guess store some of the stuff. I never 
I've seen it. Mm -hmm. um, to the best of my knowledge, I don't think there's any docks on the um, eastern side of uh, the, the Ziggler's Cove. Um, uh, off the top of my head, I don't think there's any docks per se. Um, there is a beach area as you turn around and, and go towards um, exit stop, and you know they have that, the water. They have the beachfront with a cabin or whatever you want to call yep, it. That's right. actually waterfront level. Um, but uh, to my knowledge, again, I don't think there's any moorings in Scott Cove that are tied to the shore, in, in Ziggler's Cove, that are tied to the shore um, on, a, on a dock. And that potentially could change. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. But again, those are pretty big uh, you know, walls, rock walls that you have to go through on that side of the, of the cove. Right. right. Well, the, the other thing that I think a lot of people haven't appreciated about that potential deal, if it were to happen, is that it would then give us sure access to half of the town's shellfish beds for the first time. Oh gosh, that's interesting. And that property also owns or controls deeded beds. Yes. In that area. I don't know if these. those are part of the prop. I don't. I don't know. I don't know yeah. if that's part of the sale. Who knows? That's exciting, though. I mean, that could really open up the the rosters of those who get their permits over here. That would be the, terrific. It's great. I mean, I think we'd probably have to get more clams. I don't know. What's the rate of depletion? <laughs> <laughs> there are lots of them out there right now. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Anyway. Um, well, Tom, is so you've heard the concerns. Is, is there anything else we should be thinking about here with regard to um, no. interfacing of you or the potential new person coming in right away? Again, I think that if the person who was selected is working through the process, is, there's not a lot of training that I have to do or whatever. I mean, it's system training. Yep. It's the hardware, uh, the, you know, the software to make it make the stuff work. Um, and the good thing is, he already has moorings um, uh, in Scott Cove. He has a mooring in Scott Cove, so he understands my processes. So it's not that hard. Yeah. Well, it's good to hear because that, you know, operationally had some worries. Yeah, it's a little different than when I took over from Bob Price. He <laughs> yeah. gave me a five drawer, five drawer file cabinet and said, here you go. <laughs> uh, anyways, thank you. Appreciate you coming. Appreciate you giving the update. And um, we'd love to see you again, but I guess we hope we don't see you again except at the boat club. <laughs> yep. So, thank you. Thanks very much. Um, so why don't we shift to the shellfish report, and um, Eric uh, is back from the annual gathering of the shellfish commissions, which always has a funny ring to it, but I've been to a couple of them, and it's really fascinating. So um, it, it might really you give us a little overview? Uh, <clears throat> I, didn't, I had no idea what to expect, and it was a, a lot more interesting than I, than I anticipated. Um, they started off with one of the major concerns that people have in the sound with regards to what's known as the uh, flesh-eating bacteria, the Vibrio. And the fact that it's been around now for the last four years, five, actually since 2016, but had a peak in 2019 and 2020 when a lot of people were obviously using the beaches because you know, we had to live a sedentary lifestyle that year. Um, <clears throat> the, the, the biggest issues weren't so much for people that had um, open wounds that are being eaten by, the, by this bacteria. It's more actually for self selfish consumption. So they came out with a list of the do's and don'ts of what you, can, what you should be doing um, when uh, using, we're doing recreational shell fishing. <coughs> so I'm actually going to scan these, or actually I'm going to have Tessa uh, give me the, the original copies so that we can give them to the Department of Health. Um, it just basically says harvest only from open areas, always check your status of your shellfish area by calling um, your health department. We're looking at this particular um, website. Plan your harvest at the beginning of upwards uh, tide cycle. Do not harvest shellfish that have been exposed to direct sunlight for more than two hours. Keep shellfish submerged under a floating bag or similar device. Never use your boat's live well. <clears throat> keep shellfish shaded. Keep shellfish on ice in the refrigeration and so forth and so forth. So basically all the precautions that are quote unquote necessary in order to not um, get sick um, 
if the shellfish were contaminated by uh, this particular uh, uh, bacteria. I haven't heard some of this before, like the outgoing tide and the, and the So this is, this is what, what, they, what they put in, and then when you were talking about water sampling, now they have, they actually uh, will do the analysis for us. They have water. They have three water sampling areas right now in in around Darien, Norwalk, and Stanford, and they actually have the guidelines as to what is necessary for water sampling and shellfish meat samples. So um, the scheduling has to be the, the, the samples have to be scheduled with the Department of Agriculture, and then I mean I'll, I'll spare you the details, but they basically uh, say that. Temperature has to be between zero and 10 degrees centigrade. Uh, the quality of the bottles has to be consistent. They have to be perfectly clean. Um, they have, the samples have to be processed within 30 hours of collection. And they're only being collected between Monday and Thursday, no later, and delivered to Milford, where their testing facility is no later than 12 p.m. on Thursday. So they have this for the water quality as well as for the shellfish quantity. Um, Darien waters are actually pretty good. Uh, there were some issues last year with cyanobacteria, so blue-green algae um, in Greenwich, which uh, was pretty bad. There are four uh, monitored pathogens in, in the sound uh, currently, and, well, four, four that are harmful, that are, that are uh, routinely monitored in the sound. And most of these diseases uh, that affect shellfish affect oysters, not hard clams. The only there's only one disease uh, called HM that affects hard clams, and it's found in New Jersey and Massachusetts, and it only affects um, uh, clams that come out of hatcheries, so basically very, very small ones. Uh, so that's, that's basically good news, since yeah. our sh sh um, shellfish beds for the public are just hard clams. Correct. That's uh, and evidently we have, you know, a, a glut of them. So, uh, as Flip was saying, you know, there's, there's, there's quite a few of them. Problem is they're, you know, fist size. So, not a problem. Not a problem. Go cool for chatter, baby. There you go. Um, there are PFOA, PFOS um, issues in the water, and they're, they're running water samples because of. Uh, possible runoff. So this is one of the things that we were talking about. If there was too much phosphorus, if there was too much nitrogen, yeah. runoff coming from beach erosion from the rivers and, and so forth. So that's something that they're they're actively monitoring. And one thing that I thought was really interesting is that they got half a million dollars to be able to restore um, recreational shellfish beds. And they have uh, located four areas where they want to restore oysters. Uh, paid for by the state and the federal government. One is Bridgeport, Bridgeport, Stratford area. One is Fairfield. Uh, one is Greenwich, and one is Darien, where they want to restore oysters. So on Fish Island and off Long Neck Point. So I told Dave Carey, it was you know obviously we'd love to, to, to see oysters, but we haven't had oysters there in, in quite some time. Every time we tried to take a look, there weren't any because we don't have the seat, we don't have the right beds or anything else. Uh, according to them, they're still going to be able to transplant oysters into those locations, and they have to get it done by June. So at the risk of being a little very specific on this, the Great Island bed is very mucky mm -hmm. and not suitable really For to oysters, oysters. Mm -hmm. at least in an area that would be shallow enough that you could access. The Contentment Island bed and I've had this conversation directly with Kristen, has a very almost concrete-like bottom where it makes it hard for the clams to dig in. They don't and, when you, and when you drop them there, you often see like the, the backs of them sticking up out of the sand because the sand's so hard. She has told me that that is a very good place for oysters, that that habitat is good for clams and oysters. I think the actual fish island bed, which is this wacky triangle, mm -hmm. the only place that would be good is right at the edge of the triangle by the little cove that's cut off by the swim buoys. 
the current through here, I think, makes it too strong for them, and then maybe you could stick them over here. So, so it's northward of the Fish Islands, between the Fish Islands and the, the, and the Bay. Island. Exactly. I think the Contentment Island bed and along the Bay, right along that buoy chain yep. Yep. that's yep. there in the summer, yep. um, those would be good spots, but that's my opinion. Anyway. That's perfect. Uh, I asked uh, Dave Carey for any kind of details as to when they would do it and what exactly they were doing, how much they're going to be putting in and so forth. I'm just what, not sure they have the visibility really because they're not out there in a, like where actually a good spot is. They, he wasn't very forthcoming with it, with information because he didn't even know where he was going to get the, the, the oyster from. Um, so my understanding was that they were going to get him from Massachusetts. Uh, I asked him why would he get them from North Blue or Primer, who actually have hatcheries right here in Norwalk. The well fleet oysters are the best. If that's what they're getting. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> that could be the reason. Um, but uh, he, you know, he was pretty tight-lipped about uh, where they're getting the oysters from and when the actual uh, dumping or seeding would, would take place. Although it has to happen before you But my inclination on this is we don't want the state to do this and we not be involved, get some attention, turn to it, have some fun with it. That's exactly what I told him. It's like, you know, it'd be nice to let us know, especially if it's going to be happening in the next two months. It's an exciting thing to get a newspaper article to do some posts on mm -hmm. for us to join them when they're doing it. Um, yes, if, if we have no awareness, it's absolutely useless for yeah. our recreational. Tom needs to know where they're going so we can get them. <laughs> <laughs> but the oysters are a little different than clams, though, the, the dynamic there. Because when we get clams, we're having somebody put onto our beds harvestable clams. Mm -hmm. Right? So the next day, if you do let some people in the room, then go right to the where the pile of them is on your invitation. Um, what are you doing today? The, but those are immediately harvestable. The oysters, my guess is that they're not putting harvest size oysters because that's I, super expensive. Right now they're putting sea oysters. Right. So so they're small for now. Yeah. So yeah, plus they have to put it's the shell great for well. like right. just like a media piece, but it's not like you want people to go out and regular. start looking for them, because you've got to have two years before they get to market size. But, but, the, 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 but it's more than a media piece. I, I, I don't understand fully the whole program, but I assume they see habitat benefit. Like this is improving our shoreline um, in some fashion, that it's the, keeping the water cleaner, having more oysters that will grow from it. I, I assume there's Benefit the I, flora and fauna here. I don't know. What. So they're, they're saying that this year they will be putting seed and oysters in those four areas, and they're going all the way up the coast of, uh, to, to Guilford. Um, we should where, demand where an audience else. with them, hmm? well, in, in a positive way. We, we, should, we should go up and have a meeting and learn all about it and see how we can not amplify what's happening. Mm -hmm. there, there are two pieces, I think. The moisture restoration. One piece is taking a shell and just putting it down, and and they sometimes have excess shell um, for use in these oyster restoration projects, so that the natural oh, spat, thank you, drops onto that shell. It's called culture. Yeah. Yeah. Um, spat culture. You, you guys are. Better than <laughs> been teaching us this. And then there's just dropping the seed oyster mm -hmm. or any other kind of oyster into that habitat, which will grow more over time. But um, the shell might be more valuable in terms of creating a long-term sustainable thing than just dropping some oyster mm -hmm. seed, I think. And again, they didn't tell us, they didn't want to say the provenance of the shell or the, the, the seed oysters, um, which I thought was odd, considering you know, within five miles we have both. And is this all Tessa's project? The woman we met when we were down the Dave is the one who's do, who was the one talking about it directly. Tessa was doing other stuff. Yeah. Um, trying to see which one. This is Dave Carey, you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tessa was talking about the vibrato, but about the um, the pathogens, and and the, the she, she, Tessa wrote up the shellfish restoration guide and the surveys of natural oyster habitats, which it, which was the, the follow-up from uh, her visit last fall. Eric, what 
department of the state is this? Is department this of Agriculture. A, it's the Department UAG. of Agriculture. Within, within CTD. Aquaculture. So I'll, I'll reach, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. I'll tell him you gave us a download. I'll reach out to Dave Carey, who sometimes responds quickly and sometimes does not. But, but, but asking <laughs> for how can we interject. He, he's he's or, not the most loquacious person of that group. Yeah, but he's been a great benefit to us in a couple of times, and he and I have talked. So um, let's, I, I just want to see what we can't do that's positive to help out here. Help One of the things that they, were, that they were talking about, and I, I really don't have uh, any knowledge about, were the pump-out boats, saying that there are 24 pump-out boats in Connecticut, and that they visit every harbor on a regular basis. Is that true, to be able to pump out? There's one in Norwalk, yeah. called the Norwalk Blue. Yeah. yeah, and they'll come to a radio call. Yeah, yeah. and they just take Wait, the gallons. It's owned by Sam. It's owned by Save the Sound. Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And they're they're apparently they're getting. No, them. sorry, I'm, I think I'm wrong. It's about those. Soundkeeper is on the side. Okay. Save the Sound. CTP. We have a pump out there in Brooklyn. You do? Yeah. Is it is it shore based or is it a boat? It's shore based and it's public access. The gas is not, but almost every marina has a pump out facility. Okay. Plus the they, they were talking more about the boats themselves that they come that can come in. Uh, the road have one too? No. We don't really have docks to the boats stay on. Was it well attended or? Uh, there were one, two, or three commissioners per town, and I'd say there were maybe three or four towns that weren't represented. <coughs> Other than that, virtually every shore, shoreline uh, municipality was represented. Mm -hmm. Get a free lunch? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a cast of characters there. Today. It is. It, 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 it was actually uh, pretty fun. Is that uh, an annual event? It is. Okay. Eric, could you circulate the pathogen information? I Yes, yeah, so I have the hard copies, and they said that they were going to send us the presentation, the, the, the PowerPoint, either in PDF form or PowerPoint form. <coughs> And they haven't done that yet, so as soon as I have it, I'll, I'll send it out. Um, other than that, these are actually available on uh, the state's website. But, so I can I can forward the link if necessary. And uh, Kristen uh, <coughs> remember, no Derazio there. Bannock. Right? She's no longer there. She yeah. left in October. Did they have a replacement? Uh, no. And so they, they seem to have a problem with... Um, they, they're waiting for someone else to, to run even more tests. They need two techs, and they only have one. So they were a little backed up on the water quality uh, testing. Other than that, I think they have one uh, open position, which was left open when um, Kristen left. And she's the head contamination person. I mean, she would do the emergency runs when stuff was going awry in the state. But so if that, that was moved to Emily Marquis, and so um, you know, if you're talking about any algal blooms or anything else, there's a hotline that they, they to call for any harmful algal bloom and, and, uh, uh, and so forth. And one of the things that they actually wanted, and uh, they wanted the participation of people in Harvard Mission, Shellfish Commissions who have drones to be able to uh, see if there was any kind of runoff, particularly after you know, long rain events and so forth. Um, as well as any beach erosion or uh, shellfish beds that, you know, to be able to, to delineate them properly uh, using drone photography uh, or videography. And now they did that, they, they showed us an example of what they did in Bridgeport and Stratford, and evidently the, the cameras that are being used are not just for, you know, regular video, but you can do sort of a, their version of LiDAR or some other kind of telemetry that they can actually do with to, to measure turbidity, water temperature, and everything else that is can be drone mounted. Uh, so they were uh, asking to see if anybody uh, had them or would be willing to use them. I didn't mention anything, but um, I know you're you're a drone aficionado. I, yeah, I don't have any of those fancy <laughs> lidar on mine. That's cool. Just pictures. Um, other than that, 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 that's pretty much it. That sounds great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Um, I'll come back to you on what Kerry might say about the next step and what they're doing. So, I mean, it's happening fast, so I'll get it. It is. Reach out to I was actually way. very surprised because, uh, so we didn't know about it. The people from Greenwich didn't know about it. People from Bridgeport didn't know about it. So basically, this was all under wraps, and they, they, they let us know, and four municipalities were represented there in, in, in the auditorium, didn't even know that they were coming.
Yeah, um, we've got to make sure that it's a bigger you know, billboard than just four guys going out on a boat quietly mm -hmm. on a Saturday morning. <clears throat> Neat. Anyway, thank you. Appreciate that. No problem. Thanks for going. That's, uh, I think that's it for the agenda I put forward. Does anyone else have any other business they'd like to bring up? Motion to dismiss. And second to the motion, and we'll... Segundo. I'll dismiss, and we're out of here for our second in person. Thanks. Thanks for coming. <laughs>